Over the past couple of weekends, I helped host two information security online educational training events. These are Capture the Flag competitions. I hosted the NomCon 2023 Capture the Flag competition that had about five and a half thousand players across the world, public on the open internet, and the Cyber Jutsu Con Day Capture the Flag that was a private and closed event with only about 30 players or so. Ultimately, this requires a whole lot of digital infrastructure. I need servers, I need load balancers, I need resources, all the things that rely on the cloud. Now, truthfully, we've done this for years. Myself and another ragtag team of hackers, hey, we've been trying to chip away at putting together infrastructure and hosting these Capture the Flag training events for, honestly, what, five years now? If you go back to VersetCon, I don't know if that was 2019 or 2020, but this would really be the fourth year of running NomCon, for one thing. And I'll admit, hey, we've made tons of mistakes all along the way. There are always lots of lessons learned, but even back in the beginning, early days, we hosted all of the challenges and even the scoreboard, the CTF front end itself. Originally, we started with within DigitalOcean. I created about five like duplicate replica servers and I'd have the load balancer just spit and shoot a user into one of those servers. I did the same thing with challenges. Any dynamic service or something that you actually interact with like a website or a netcat socket or even something just to SSH into, it would end up being a Docker container running across one of these many servers. That meant that when a player or a user would connect, they would end up hitting the load balancer and get shot to one of those other instances, but that meant that it had to be stateless. Maybe stateless isn't the right word, but it meant that it was a shared instance. So all of the players would connect to what was ultimately one thing, or at least maybe, okay, spread out and fanned across five different instances through the load balancer, but then it was just sort of luck of the draw as to what you landed in, and if other players were to make modifications, or change the file system, or remove the flag, and vandalize the environment, okay, well that's not good and no fun. So we really had to rely on a lot of read-only systems, but that really, really limits the creative canvas for challenges and tasks and activities and exercises that you want to put the player through in a capture the flag. So that was not ideal, but those were the early days and we have improved and gotten better in that. With that, there's a whole lot of change to our digital infrastructure, to what we set up and create in the cloud, and even changing our cloud hosting provider. Looking across the scene, hey, you've got Azure over here, you've got AWS, Amazon Web Services, you've got Google Cloud Platform, and whatever, however many more there might be, but we landed on GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. And if I may, if you want to get a little bit smarter on all this cloud stuff, these different hosting providers, how you can learn more about them, even get certified in some areas, I'd love to have a quick moment to give some support to our sponsors, where you can learn all about cloud with the Cloud Institute. Cloud Institute. It's not just another training company. And I know, training has become a commodity. With Cloud Institute, you get paired with a subject matter expert and get to work one-on-one -on -one with an experienced cloud coach. It's your own personal mentor to help you learn and grow in your career within cloud security. Cloud coaching helps you prepare for certification exams, overcome obstacles in your work, or map out your career path. And with a cloud coaching membership, you get complete access to the Institute's whole library of labs, training videos, and skill assessment tools. Cloud Institute will tailor the experience to everyone, whether or not it's an individual or a whole IT or security team. A coaching subscription starts at $64 a month or $4.98 a year. If you're not sure if you're ready for a subscription, check out some of their individual courses that come with coaching sessions. Learn all about the Google Cloud Platform, Amazon Web Services, or Azure Cloud, and just how Cloud Institute can accelerate your career. You can check out all that Cloud Institute has to offer with my link below in the video description. Huge thanks to Cloud Institute for sponsoring this video. So first things first in improving our infrastructure. You can actually see if you go back into the archives, you can find videos from years past on YouTube where I chat a little bit about this and I don't think that was in the, in the trajectory of changing things and trying to make things better. But we really wanted to lean in on automation. And that is where you get that cheesy term infrastructure as code. And you guessed it, hey, we started to use Terraform. With Terraform, we could define, hey, this is the database that we need. This is the Redis cache server that we need. These are the actual different compute engines and servers that we need. And we could lay these all out with the resources that we require and have that in a standard desired state, an actual like straight up configuration file like infrastructure as code to document that and to have that spin up rapidly all of this infrastructure. Best thing about Terraform is that it's pretty, hey, cloud hosting provider agnostic. Like you could use it for GCP or AWS or what have you. This made the deploy of the infrastructure basically push button ready go easy, right? We just run Terraform plan, Terraform apply, and then we're good. Now is the question of 
scale and actually getting the users into their own dedicated like per user instance for a challenge that they want to spin up. Their environment for a dynamic service, whether it be an HTTP web application, Netcat, Socket, SSH, you know the drill, right? Now this is where the magic comes in. Truthfully, it's like leaning on, I don't know what folks make out to be a buzzword, but it's genuinely awesome if you use it the right way. It's Kubernetes. We have our capture the flag CTFD front end infrastructure built as a Docker container so that with Kubernetes, hey, we can fan that out across multiple nodes and have many, many replicas to be able to withstand the force of, I don't know, 6,000 players trying to F5 and refresh the game at the very start of the competition. That also means that all of the dynamic services, like the challenges themselves, the containers that get spun up for a website, Netcat, yada, 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 they can be dedicated and unique to that user or to that team that's playing in the capture the flag competition and then spun up, spun down, extended with a timeout, whatever, and they have their own environment. So they don't have to worry about flag stomping or vandalizing from other players because they have their own instance. That is all thanks to the magic of Kubernetes and GKE, right? The Google Cloud Kubernetes engine. So we define all of this infrastructure as code with Terraform targeting GCP, the Google Cloud platform, using GKE, the Kubernetes engine, to be able to spin and scale and stretch all this as needed. Load balancer pointing appropriately to the node pool here. And then we're using GitHub repositories that manage basically the gold images for challenges or what the scoreboard should look like, our theme and interface, etc. Now, of course, we built out some automated tooling to be able to manage all of the challenges that we've worked with for different events. It's kind of wild, you know, looking past, I think we've got almost like 750 challenges that we've built out over the years. And thankfully with all of this tech, with all this, hey, new knowledge and know-how of all these cloud hosting providers and everything that we've able to build, this is basically kind of a turnkey solution. When folks come to and say, hey, uh, we've got an event in the next week, would you be willing to spin up a game and host a CTF competition? Like, yeah, we can do that. That is honestly, I think, a whole lot of the flexibility that the cloud gives you, right? And especially, again, Terraform, Kubernetes, using the magic in the mix while you can, but there's no way we could do that on like a Raspberry Pi just sitting in a closet, right? Now, of course, credit where credit is due, that stuff is phenomenal, home lab, Raspberry Pi all the way, Intel Nook, small stuff, super easy to just run something local out of a laptop, maybe an on-site event, but when we're putting something on the worldwide stage across the internet, uh, we gotta have a little bit more stability and uptime there. If I may also mention, that also allows for a whole lot of collaboration. Like, I can't be a sole single person running the show. Uh, I kind of rely on some other team members and great friends that can help host this thing, and they're able to get into that interface, work within GCP, hey, spin up some of the code in the repository. We would not be able to do that if it were not online in the cloud. And I would be remiss if I did not mention, yes, of course, this ultimately relies on you spot checking and making sure things are up to snuff. Uh, first 15 minutes of the NomCon 2023 game, we had some downtime because, oh, whoops, that Terraform configuration just didn't have the right size database. It got overwhelmed and we had to bounce a couple things to get the game back in action. Totally understanding and I know that that is just sort of the nature of the beast and a lot of the capture the flag world, but also gives us new lessons learned and things to improve on. Hey, we gotta update this. Hey, we gotta make sure this is solid for the next game, next event, next competition. The thing is, that's just changing one line of code. But hey, enough of me rambling. I do think there are a whole lot of capture the flag events now coming together that are using these dedicated deployable user instances that are typically spun up as containers or Kubernetes and just makes the magic happen. Of course, all online infrastructure, thanks to AWS or GCP or Azure or what have you, that cloud infrastructure is really what can set something on the world stage across the internet all online. With that, if you wanna get a little bit smarter on some cloud stuff, again, please do check out our sponsor. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, YouTube algorithm stuff. Hope you enjoyed a little talking head video, but I'll see you in the next video. Take care.